This carbon tax has got to go, and I'm gonna explain why. The carbon tax isn't the issue. The issue is competition. If they collect a little bit more tax than us Canadians and make us all broke, we're gonna be able to save the planet from burning up. There's a lot of talk about the carbon tax right now and between the political jabs and social media rants, it can be hard to get a handle on what this really means for you. Like, how much are you really paying? Can you get more money back? And is it even really helping the environment? Let's get into it. First up, not everyone pays the federal carbon tax and not everyone gets rebates. British Columbia, the three territories, and Quebec do have some form of carbon pricing. But if you live there, you don't get the federal rebate. If you live in the rest of Canada, you pay the federal carbon tax and you get a federal rebate. Businesses also pay the carbon tax. Big companies with big emissions may fall under a separate industrial carbon pricing system. Canada has had a national price on greenhouse gas emissions since 2019, and it goes up every year. It started at $20 per ton. On April 1st, it will reach $80, and it's slated to increase $15 a year until 2030, added to fuels that emit CO2 and other greenhouse gases when burned. Carbon pricing in Canada is a key pillar of our emissions reduction strategy. So this is Sarah Hastings-Simon. She's a professor at the University of Calgary. She studies how carbon pricing and other energy transitions can help Canada achieve its climate goals. The thinking behind carbon pricing, she says, is this. By putting a price on uh, carbon emissions, on greenhouse gas emissions, we make it more expensive to emit, more expensive to create uh, more carbon, and therefore we make it lower cost to, to use alternatives that create less carbon emissions. Not everyone can afford to go green, so let's do the math on what the rising price means. At the pump on April 1st, you'll pay about three cents extra per liter. That's on top of the carbon tax you already are paying. For the average driver, your total carbon tax bill for a full tank of gas will be from eight to $11. But as the carbon tax rises, so do rebates. He also as part of carbon pricing is what's done with the money that's collected. All of that money, uh, when it comes to federal carbon pricing, is returned to individuals and families within the province uh, that it's collected from. Maybe the most confusing thing about the carbon tax is the money some get back. Do you know whether or not you got the carbon tax rebate? I believe I did, but I'm not sure. Do you have questions about the carbon tax? Like, do you understand it fully? Uh, I'm not sure about it right now. You're a resident of Ontario, right? Yeah, yeah so you live here in Ottawa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not sure if you got the rebate? No, no. Those rebates are now called the Canada Carbon Rebate. The term rebate is a bit misleading because you get the money up front before paying the carbon tax. This is the government's attempt to make sure low-income earners are not out of pocket. How much you receive depends on your family size and where you live. For example, a family of four in Alberta receives $450 every three months. Rural residents could soon receive a 20% top-up. That's because they tend to drive more and use more energy than people who live in a city. The question some have, do you pay more than you get back? I did my own calculations. I pay about half of what I get back in the rebate. So you're making money? Yeah, so for me... That's Andrew Leach, an economics professor at the University of Alberta. He wrote about his family's rebate on his substack. Turns out, he's making a profit. What about others? Do we get back more money in the form of rebates than we pay in the form of a carbon tax? If you were you know, driving a high emissions vehicle, driving more than the average Canadian, living in a larger than average house, traveling more than average, then you're in those groups that are not getting as much back as they're paying. To better understand the original analysis, let's bring in Parliamentary Budget Officer Yves Giroux. The independent budget watchdog also looked at this. He told CBC's Power and Politics, the rich tend to lose money with the carbon tax, lower and middle income families make money. If you take into consideration the carbon tax that households pay on their fossil fuels that they're buying, gasoline, natural gas, diesel, mm -hmm. and so they pay that directly and they subtract from that the, the rebate, then about 80% of households are better off. 
That's one way of looking at it. Examine the broader impact on the economy and a different view emerges. A negative one, according to the parliamentary budget officer. His economic analysis shows the carbon tax reduces jobs and revenues from the transport and oil and gas sectors. Lower employment, lower profits, lower dividends for those who own stocks. Meaning workers in the oil patch could lose their jobs, and Canadians who hold shares in oil companies like Suncor or Synovus could see lower investment returns. So is the carbon tax even working? The answer is complex. Is carbon pricing working to reduce emissions? You know, it's a tricky question in terms of it's very hard in a, in a causal way to say, I'm going to point to, you know, this specific thing that happened and it happened because of carbon pricing. Environment and Climate Change Canada says its modeling does show that our emissions would be higher without carbon pricing. And we also know that there is a cost to not acting on climate change, which the science says means more deadly heat domes, more intense wildfires and floods. David Thornton, CBC News, Ottawa.